Welcome back to our introduction of Epsilon Professional. In the fourth tutorial, I would like to introduce control elements which enable us to meet certain boundary conditions by controlling parameters within our cycle. Just as in our following example, in which we will achieve a specific generator output by controlling the mass flow of our live steam. We will use the controller with the external set value, component 39, in order to achieve this. This component has only two connections. The yellow line indicates the actual value, which is being compared to the reference value indicated by the specification value SCV. The second line is a logical line which in our case will control the live steam mass flow. So let's take a look at the specification values of our controller. First of all we have to know what type the compared value is. In our case, it is the power, so we choose power here. Immediately, you can see the reference value changes from pressure to power. The second value we have to pay attention to is the corrected value type, which will be the mass flow. And another very important value is the controller characteristic. The controller characteristic is positive if the change of the corrected value is proportional to a change of the compared value, which means the generator power rises with rising mass flow, which is the case in our example. The controller characteristic would be negative if this relationship would behave vice versa. If a rising compared value would be achieved by reducing the corrected value. So for now, the positive characteristic is perfectly correct. Uh, now I would like to have a power output of 150 megawatt and of course I have to pay attention and connect the lines properly to the rest of my cycle. Therefore I will now mirror my controller in the view property menu and connect the actual value line with the generator output line and the correction line with my live steam line. I will simulate the cycle and you see that our generator output has changed to 150 megawatt now and we have now identified the correlating live steam mass flow which is in our case around 124.25 kg per second. The value within our component 33 is now nothing else than the start value of our controller, which means that in the first iteration our mass flow value was 120 
and was then changed to 124.25 kg per second in order to meet the 150 megawatt of output. We can also see the same relation in, in our convergence diagram. This is the overall convergence of our cycle, but we can also change to the controller diagram. The green line indicates the reference value of 150 megawatt. The red line, the actual value, which changes through the iterations. The black line is the mass flow which is controlled by the controller component. You see the mass flow changes from 120 kilograms per second after a few iterations to the value around 124. We can also change the controller characteristics and for instance set the controller damping to a very or extremely high level. After the simulation, which now takes significantly more iterations, we will see that the lines are smoothly, are now slowly, smoothly closing into our reference value. Uh, controller damping can be useful in the case of an instable cycle. In this actual case, we don't have any convergence problems, so we can deactivate the controller damping. Another very important specification value is the fact value, which allows us to delay the start of our controller. So we can start uh, within 20, 30, 40 iterations after the beginning of the simulation, or we can, for instance, deactivate the controller completely. We should also pay attention to the source of our start value, which can be defined with the specification value FL2 start, where I can tell our controller whether the start value is specified internally by the value L2 start, which would be here or is derived from an external component 33 or 46, which is the case right now, as our controller is taking its start value from this component 33. In the second step, I would like to add a flue gas path to our basic power plant model. I will add a furnace and an air preheater. And uh, we will use a controller with an external set value in order to balance the power of our combustion with the power needed in order to generate 
a certain power output. I will use the controller component number 12, which uh, includes an external reference value. And uh, you obviously can see that the difference between component uh, 39 and 12 is the amount of connections available on it. Let's take a look at the connections. We see that Connection point 1 is our reference value, which was incorporated inside the component in component 31. We have the actual value here and the correction or corrected attribute. The objective of this controller will be to balance the output of our furnace or combustion chamber with the power needed in order to create a mass flow of live steam with these parameters. So obviously this the power input of our steam generator component will be our reference value. The actual value is our output of the furnace and we will control our coal mass flow or fuel mass flow in order to meet both values. I have to parameterize the controller properly based on what I said just before. We will change the mass flow. And of course our controller characteristic is positive because the more fuel I put into my combustion, the more energy I will get out. The source of our start value will be externally, which means that we will need a mass flow value in this component 33, which I already specified here. Let's try to start a simulation. Once again, our error analysis tool. And it says that the terminal temperature difference is set to small. We have an inlet temperature of the air of 20 degrees Celsius. And let's take a look at our heat exchanger. It says that the heat exchanger is based on the lower terminal temperature difference, which should be 5 Kelvin. In this case, given an inlet temperature of the air of 20 degrees Celsius, our outlet temperature of our cold flue gas should be only 25 degrees Celsius, which is of course too low. And uh, the easiest will be to change the specification in order to use an upper terminal temperature difference. And we will set it to around 50 
Kelvin. This uh, simulation works. Let's take a look at our air preheater again. We see right now that our upper terminal temperature difference is now exactly 50 Kelvin and we have an heat transfer coefficient of almost 2000 kilowatt per Kelvin. We can also see that our power output of the combustion chamber meets exactly the needed power for our steam generator and we have determined a mass flow of fuel of 12.9 kg per second. The mass flow of air is around 178 kg per second right now. This value is derived from the lambda of our combustion chamber component, which indicates the ratio between the actual air and the air needed for stoichiometric combustion. So this would be it for our introduction of the controller components. In regard to the controllers, we should always keep in mind that we have to know what is the type of compared value, or uh, I could also say, what is the type of our reference value. We should always know what the corrected value is, the controller characteristic, whether the compared and the corrected value behave proportional to each other, and of course the source of our start value, whether it is internal or external. In the next lesson, our subject will be the difference between design and of design calculation.